one kilogram equals 1,000 grams, and we know that one gram equals 1,000 milligrams. So because we're gonna to have to use two ratios to get from where we're starting to where we wanna end up, it means we're going to have to do two steps of the factor label method. 0 0.030 kilograms over one times, okay, our first ratio is gonna have kilograms in the bottom, so the kilograms are gonna cancel out, and grams on the top, so we're using this one. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. Okay, if we, if we multiplied that out, we would end up with grams, but we don't wanna end up with grams, so we're gonna multiply it one more time. Grams is gonna go in the bottom, so grams will cancel out, and milligrams is going to go on the top. So we have one gram on the bottom, from this equality right here, 1,000 milligrams on the top. So after our units are canceling out, our units will end up in milligrams. And we can multiply the numbers. So this would end up being, if we just move the decimal place over, times 1,000, and then times 1,000 again, 30, thousand milligrams and that would be the answer okay when you guys are doing your homework or your tests please circle your answers and show me your work I want to see how you got your answer and I want to easily be able to identify what your answer is all right any questions <gasps> if you do have questions write them down Write them down, email me, text me, please give me a little heads up that we're gonna spend some time talking about something, okay? Um, next up is the section in your book on derived units. All right, I need to erase this again. Remember for this first module, you are not gonna end up taking the test you are going to be doing the, I think they call them review questions in the back. There should be about 10 of those. And then the practice problems in the back for module one. That will be what you bring completed to class on our first day of class, Thursday, September 6th, which I'm so looking forward to so that I get to start getting to know each of you better. Um, Derived units is where we left off. Okay, derived units are when units change during the course of the problem, okay? Or when we're working with units in math problems, do the units change? Do they change, do they not change? How do we know what our units are gonna end up in? Okay, so there's a couple of rules here. Uh, first of all, let's take some notes on adding and subtracting with units. Again, this might all be really simple for you, or it might be a really good review for you, but we're gonna go through it just the same. Adding and subtracting units, okay? Just like in algebra, how you can only add like terms, like you can add three x plus six x and get nine x but you can't add 3x plus 6x squared because x and x squared are not what they call like terms. When you're adding or subtracting units, you have to have like units or similar units or the same units, okay? So we can do two plus three, oops, two centimeters plus three centimeters equals five centimeters, okay? So add it, with adding and subtracting, the units don't change and you can only add units that are the same. We could not do two inches plus three centimeters. That would not work. You would have to uh, convert either inches to centimeters or convert centimeters to inches before you uh, did your problem. 
multiplying and dividing units. Okay, when you are doing a math problem or a chemistry problem and you are multiplying and dividing with units, your units actually will change. Uh, the rule is when multiplying or dividing units, I'm going to abbreviate here, when multiplying or dividing units, looking at my notes here, then do exactly the same thing. Oh, sorry, I skipped something. When multiplying or dividing units, multiply or divide the numbers. Again, I'm going to abbreviate. Multiply or divide the numbers first. Then do the same thing with the units. Okay? And my example. Let's say you're finding the area of a rectangle. Okay, and you have three inches for one side of the rectangle and you have four inches here. So the area equals length times width, right? Which would be three times four, but you have to include the units. So three inches times four inches. Okay, so according to the rule, when multiplying or dividing with units, multiply or divide the numbers first, so 3 times 4 is 12, then do the same thing with the units, so inches times inches is inches squared. Okay, and you guys had that in math, so just a refresher, just a fun refresher. You're welcome. Thank you for thinking thank you in your heads right now. Uh, do I have another example for you? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, let's say we're finding volume, length times width times height, so three numbers. Okay, we're doing, let's pretend, okay, volume, length times width times height. We'll just pretend it was two inches times three inches times four inches. The answer would be, first the numbers, two times three is six, times four is 24. And then the units would be inches times inches times inches, which is inches cubed. Which, no, I should have used a different, I should have used centimeters because I also wanted to tell you that, this is just a side note, one centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter. Also, maybe review for you. Um, let's take a look at example 1.4. I don't think I'm going to put it on the board. You can include it in your notes if you feel like it's necessary. But example 1.4 shows you how they multiplied the units. Example 1.4, the length, the width, and the height. It gives you the numbers there. They multiplied the numbers out, then they multiplied the units out. And so the units ended up being in inches cubed. Okay? Uh, making measurements. Just a few more notes now on making measurements. You guys can see my writing okay I have to remember to try to write a little bit bigger than I normally do okay making measurement measurements um, first thing to point out is that when you are making measurements you estimate one more decimal place one more decimal place than 
the scale reads. Estimate one more decimal place than the scale reads. Okay, so for example, let's say you're measuring something with a ruler and the ruler is only showing you these tick marks for the actual inches. One, two, three, four. Okay, and let's just put something here in a different color. We're gonna measure a line to right about here. Okay, so the scale of the ruler only shows me whole numbers, but when I tell you how long this line is, I would say it is 3.5. So I am estimating one extra decimal place after um, the decimal place that the scale reads to. Hopefully that makes sense. It's also in your book, which leads me to make another important, important point. Do not just watch these videos for notes and think that you can cover the whole chapter. You will need to read the chapter as well. I think first and then get my notes from it for some extra information and extra help. Okay? Going on. So this shows us um, how we can be a little bit more precise, use precision when reading from some sort of scale. We can just use our eyes to estimate to give it one extra uh, place value or decimal place. Um, I also want to give you a definition for accuracy and precision. What is the difference between accuracy and precision? Accuracy is whether a measurement, okay, accuracy is whether a measurement is uh, true whether a measurement is true or close to the true value. In other words, is it correct? Okay, do you think that my line that I drew here is actually, let's say these are inches, do you think that I was accurate when I said that this line right here is 3.5 inches? Probably not. If I put a ruler up there, I think that my inches are probably a little bit too big. So my, my estimate here of 3.5 inches is really not that accurate. Okay? That's accuracy. Precision is a little different. Precision is whether two or more measurements are close to each other. Whether two or more measurements are close to each other. So if I asked one of you to tell me how long my teal line was here, looking at my scale, maybe one of you would say, oh, I think it's, uh, Looks to me like it's 3.6 inches long. Okay, so our two measurements were pretty close to each other, so they were fairly precise, but they weren't really accurate because I don't think that this is actually 3.5 or 3.6 inches long. So that's the difference between precision and accuracy. And you can look in your book also, there is a figure showing a bullseye and some arrows to show the difference between accuracy and precision. You can be accurate but not precise, or you can be precise but not be accurate, or what's best is to be accurate and precise. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. 
Now, a word on what we call significant figures. When you're talking about how precise you are, you have to know how many significant figures to leave in your answer, okay? Say you did a calculation on your calculator and you came out with the answer of 21.76543210.